Seekers, I'm Nick. We're checking out another Z490 board. Today we're checking out a mini ITX one. It's the Z490i Aorus Ultra from Aorus. And as you probably can see here, I don't have the board because I've already sent it on. We sent it on over to Optimum Tech. I'm sure he'll have a video on his channel coming with that board very, very soon. But yeah, in the meantime, let's, let's check it out. So we better roll that intro. Let's go. With these motherboard videos, I've got to say this, they're not reviews, they're just overviews so you can get an idea of what comes in the box when you buy a brand new motherboard. And in this case, there's actually quite a lot and there's a quite a bit of a nice innovation with this motherboard. I think it's gonna be carried over to many other boards in the future. So I'm gonna stop talking and uh, we're gonna check it out. So let's do it. Alrighty, ladies and gents, let's check out the Z490i Aorus Ultra Mini ITX board for Intel's 10th generation CPUs. Uh, let's see what we usually do and get the motherboard out of the way and take a look at what's in the box. First off, we've got the shark fin antenna. This is for the Wi-Fi 6 or the Wi-Fi AX that's built into the motherboard. Okay, what else have we got here? Ooh, a 12 volt RGB extension cable. Now this motherboard does a few different things that most ITX boards don't do, so stick around and... Yeah, we're about to show you, right? Now, this is a nice little innovation. Basically what it is, is it uses a different connector to connect the PWM cable to the motherboard because it's easier to plug in fans and anything that needs PWM after the fact with a type of connection like this. It's a very elegant solution for small form factor builds. Next up is another one of those innovations. It's a USB 2.0 breakout cable that plugs into a header on the motherboard to save space. And I really like like how Aorus is doing this with their new Z490 boards, more specifically the top tier ones. It's a very good idea. Next up, we've got two SATA or SATA cables. This is for plugging in your 2.5 inch SSDs or those old school spinning rush drives. Right, next up, we've got this little badge. Now, the interesting thing about this is if you put this on your case, it will give you 57,000 extra frames per second in any game that you play regardless of the game. There's also this circular plastic device that I have no idea what it is. I've never seen one of these before. And truth be told, if it's a disc and uh, who puts an optical drive in a small form factor PC? I don't know who would actually do that. Next up is these screws. And uh, actually it's just a single screw. It's for the M.2 slot on the back side of the motherboard, which we're gonna show shortly. Yes, I will be showing the back side of the board in this video. And uh, last but not least is the manual. Now this will tell you basically everything about the board, what everything is on the board, and a few things to change in the BIOS to do all of the things. Okay, let's uh, let's stop talking about all the stuff that comes with it and talk about the board itself. So, yeah, let's uh, get it out of the plastic, slide it out, nice and slow, Nick. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Let's uh, spin it around and take a little bit of a closer look at what's going on here. All right, the first thing we've got is that breakout cable for the USB 2.0 and the front panel connector. There's a USB type C header and behind that, well, behind the USB 3.0 header is a 12 volt RGB header. There's also four SATA or SATA connectors for those 2.5 inch SSDs or those spinning rust drives. There's also a 24 pin power connector to send all the juice to that brand new 10th gen CPU. And if we look along the top side of the board, these are the breakout connectors for the PWM connectors. And there's three in total. I actually really like this. I think this is a very innovative way of doing this. It's a, it's pretty well executed. There's another regular PWM fan connector in case you wanted to use it and the eight pin EPS connector to send all of the power to that CPU of yours. Next up, we've got some of the other connections. We've got a front panel audio connector. We've got a five volt three pin addressable RGB connector. This being an ITX board, there is only a single PCIe slot and it is a 16 time slot. Pretty standard stuff for ITX boards, but as we look closer on the board, you will notice something new. And that is the new LGA 1200 socket that supports the new 10th gen CPUs. And we've done a few videos with these type of boards already, so I won't try and explain the differences between the socket too much. But basically, if we pop the top cover off, you'll see that the locating tabs are moved to the bottom of the socket. So you, they are not electrically compatible with 11.5X chips. 
They, they won't work. They won't even fit in the socket. It's also got two DDR4 RAM slots, which support a total of 64 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs per module. Very, very nice for a small form factor board. And if we flip the board over, you'll see it's got a full cover backplate and it's actually pretty good for an ITX board to have one of these for a little bit of extra heat dissipation. And if we take a little bit of a closer look on the right hand side of the board, but actually let's rotate the board. There is another M.2 slot on the back of the board, which is very, very nice, which means you can have two M.2 drives on this board. But if you flip the board back over and take that giant heat sink off the top of it, you'll actually notice there is another heat sink and another M.2 slot, which is very, very nice. So like I just mentioned, two NVMe M.2 slots in total, which is going to be excellent for a little miniature workstation build. But on the rear IO, we've got USB Type-C, lots of USB 3.2 ports. We've got Display Port and HDMI 2.0. We've got a Q flash button for flashing the BIOS. There's 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, some more USB 3.2, the Wi-Fi AX connectors, and some audio. And also that integrated backplate, which has become pretty standard. But you know what time it is? It's B-roll time. nice design that backplate is really really nice too and overall i think Aorus has been nailing their boards lately and that's why we've been using them a lot it's because the boards are actually really really good now and i'm no shill or anything for Aorus. i couldn't care less as long as it's a good product i'm gonna use it and guys if you like the music that you heard here I make all the music, it's available over on our Patreon. If you want to support the channel, consider hitting the join button or getting early access on Floatplane. Anyways, guys, if you like the video, like and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, uh, hit the like, hit the dislike button twice and uh, yeah, get some magic. Yeah, that's what happens if you hit it twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek. And uh, yeah, guys, we've started streaming on our Twitch channel now. I did our first stream last night. I started at like, 11.30 at night or something crazy. It was called Gear Seekers After Dark. But yeah, we're, we're gonna be starting our streams over there now. I'm gonna do them as often as possible. So maybe two or three times a week. I'll drop a link to our Twitch channel in the description if you wanna uh, watch me be very abrasive and ranty on stream. Yep, what do you reckon, Claire? Yeah. All good. All good? Yeah. All good, okay. Thanks for watching.